I want somebody to prove me wrong on something. Now, we're going to be talking about scripture. So if you ain't got the stomach for this, then you might as well just turn the video off now. I'm going to continue. I have a challenge for you. I need somebody to disprove this. You see, everybody says they know what the Bible says. And I'm not here to tell you you are wrong. I'm not here to tell you you're right. I'm not here to tell you you're mistaken. I'm just here to ask a question. Is that okay? Can I can I ask a question? Now, I'm going to leave the comments open on this video. However, if the comments do not stick to answering the question, now, if you go off in the left field, your comment will not be posted. This is specifically for this. Now, even if you contradict, or even if you disagree, I don't mind you disagreeing, because I'm not going to tell you what I think. But, if you do it in such a way that you are trying to promote your own agenda, promote your own belief, then your comment will not be posted. Because I'm not here giving you my belief, so I don't want yours. This is, I want somebody to prove me wrong with scripture. Okay? Just that simple. That's all. I know that many of my peoples who watch my videos read scripture. Now, you notice I didn't say Bible. I said scripture. Why? Because I'm talking about the scriptures. The Bible simply means many books. So I am talking about the, pay attention, scriptures. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation, without the S. Sorry, for most of my life, I pronounced it with an S. Why? Because other people around me pronounced, pronounced it with an S. Yes, did you say pronounce or pronounced? Pronounced it with an S. Yes, I do the word pronunciation, not pronunciation. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to talk about is the 20th chapter. Now, I want to tell you that the 20th chapter explains more than enough, and most people don't understand it. So, I just want to read. I'm not going to read all 17 verses, or 15 verses, sorry. I'm not going to read all 15 verses. I'm just going to read the first section to explain that this section is by itself. Hold on. Let me make sure you see the first section. First section, by itself. It's completely different. See, he saw, and then he sees again. So, this section is by itself. That's why they break it up this way. So as you can see, context changes. It says, and I saw an angel coming out of the heaven, and he had the key to the abyss. The serpent, the dragon, the original one called Satan and devil. You can find this in Revelation, the ninth chapter, or the 12th chapter, verse 9 and 10, where it calls him the devil, Satan. Okay, the serpent, the original serpent, the dragon, and the serpent are the same. The dragon, the devil, and Satan are the same. China worships the dragon sorry china china worships the dragon people i didn't make this up go ahead and have them tell you about the year of the dragon go ahead and have them talk about their festivals go there and have them talk about their symbols in their country they worship the dragon D does that mean they worship i didn't say that i am telling you look it tells you pay attention I didn't even read the rest. I should know this by heart. But it says, the dragon, the original serpent, who is the devil and Satan. Duh! But it also tells you that in Revelation, the 12th chapter, verse 9. You see, that's one of the footnotes there. That's what it tells you. So you don't have to guess. And it says he locked up Satan. He bound him, put him in jail. Satan's getting arrested. Satan's getting arrested. Anyway, the same way people celebrated when they arrested me. And they did not have the right to do so. Well, people are going to celebrate when Satan gets arrested. But <laughs> they're going to have a right to arrest him because he's a manslayer. John 8, chapter, verse 44. He's killed people. But he's going to appeal. He's going to do the same thing I did. He's going to appeal. Pay attention. And when he appeals, because he's going to be locked up for a day. A day? says a thousand years. Well, if you go and look at the scriptures, Second Peter, the third chapter, verse 8 and 9, it says a day to God is as a thousand years. It's not exactly a thousand years. We don't know if it's a hundred years more or a thousand years less. Ah, but we do know that it's as a thousand years. So he's locked up for a day. Now, it's a thousand years to us, but it's a day to him. Oh, he gets put in time out. He gets put in time out. 
Okay, but we will have... It's like a time distortion. A thousand years will pass by for us, but only one day will pass by for him. But that's okay, because that's going to be torment for him. Because he's never been locked up. And he's going to be locked up with a bunch of other criminals, called demons, for a thousand years. Now, hold on. After this, he gets released on appeal. For just a little while. We don't know how long that little while is, but it will be a little while. Just that simple. Okay. It's not the question I have for you right now. Now, this is where we start with the questioning. During that period. Now, the beginning of this happens before that period. But we want to let you know what happens during the time he's locked away. A lot of changes are going to happen on the planet according to the scriptures and I saw thrones and there were those who sat on them and guess what was given to them the authority to judge who are these that are given this authority to judge well if we go back to the book of Matthew Jesus speaks to his disciples the night of the Passover the memorial of his death and the day before he is to die the night of his death and he says I have greatly anticipated having this meal with you for you are the ones who have stuck by me in my trials now Judas is not there he's been discharged from that particular meeting and gathering as a matter of fact this particular conversation could not happen while Judas was there that's why he dismisses Judas saying whatever it is you're about to do be at it quickly so Judas has been dismissed, and he says, you will sit down on 12 thrones, or no, on thrones, and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. So, these individuals who sat down in these thrones and had the authority to judge are the same ones he's talking about then, right or wrong. Okay, he says, yes, John. I saw souls. Souls? What does it mean by souls? Does that mean spirits and people's spirits? No. Of those executed. For the witness they gave about Jesus and speaking about God. And those who had not worshipped the wild beast or its image. And who had received neither the mark on their forehead or on their hand. And they came to life. Well, I thought he said he saw souls. So weren't they already alive? No, ladies and gentlemen, they were not. It said, and they came to life. So he had already seen them. They were not alive. It says, and they came to life, and they ruled as kings with Christ for 1,000 years. Now, hold on. There are some dead people. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the 1,000 years were ended. Ah, so these are talking about a spiritual condition. This is not talking about a fleshly condition. Oh, but is it talking about in the spirit? No. How do we know? Well, pay attention. He says, and he saw souls of those executed. Well, you can't execute a spirit. If he's talking about spirits, this is not spirit. He's talking about souls. He's talking about bodies. So he saw the bodies of those executed. No, uh, old King Cole was a Mario soul. A Mario soul was he? You know what? I think the Greek word for soul in this scripture would be psyche. Because that's the Greek word for soul. So go ahead and take a look. And see if you find the Greek word psyche associated. Alright, alright. What we'll do real quickly is we'll go to this right here and we're gonna to go to the glossary and we're gonna see so psyche Greek word there you go alright so that clears that up so we know that the word psyche is used at that verse if you don't believe me go ahead and get yourself a parallel version and look and see the Greek word it's not that big of a deal because that's not the point that we're trying to make just trying to trying to bring up a point that's all haven't gotten there yet I just have to lead you to that so be patient with me I, I I beg of you it said for the witness they gave about Jesus so these individuals would have to be witnesses of Jesus and speaking about God so now they have to be witnesses of Jesus and God and they can't worship Satan 
because he's the wild be uh, the, uh, the 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 image the beast is created by Satan. Go to chapter thirteen of Revelation. Says that the beast gets its power from the dragon. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. That's my problem. I just spoke about in a previous video. When I say things, I have to back it up, and it stood the beast still on the sand. The sand of the sea is the people. And I saw the wild beast ascending out of the sea. It's created by man because the sea is the sea of mankind. Don't believe me? It ain't talking about the ocean. With ten heads and uh, ten horns and seven heads, and on its horns were ten diadems, little crowns or symbols of rulership. And out of its heads, blasphemous names. Now the wild beast that I saw was like a leopard and his feet was like those of a bear and its mouth spoke like that of a lion's mouth and the dragon, Satan, gave the beast its power and its throne and its great authority. So Satan gives the beast its authority and power. Even though it's created because it ascends out of the sea, mankind. Now if you don't believe me about what the sea means, <sighs> hmm... That's a shame, because now we got to go to the 17th chapter. I know, I know, I know. He keeps bouncing back and forth, because that's what I want you to do when you explain to me from the scriptures. Use the scriptures to explain. This is talking about Babylon the Great and verse number 17. Or is it 15? And he said to me, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is sitting means peoples, crowds, nations, and tongues, i.e. the sea in this Part of the Bible refers to man. Okay? Peoples, nations, crowds, and languages or tongues. So now that we got that out of the way, we can get back to the conversation because that's the problem. A lot of people guess, and the scriptures are not designed for guesswork. Interpretation of scripture belongs to Jehovah. That is what both Daniel and our dear friend Joseph said when they were interpreting dreams. Interpretation, and this is the Apostle John and a vision. The same as Nebuchadnezzar had a vision and so did Pharaoh and theirs was interpreted. Let's continue. And they came to life. There's this thing about being spiritually dead. Jesus spoke about many of the people in his day as being in spiritual darkness and suffering spiritual death. He told John's disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, when they came to ask him if he was the Christ, go ahead and show John what you have seen, that the dead are being brought to life. Well, he didn't resurrect anybody on that day, but people were starting to recognize the truth, so they were becoming spiritually awake. Everybody talks about being awake these days. Well, the scriptures speak about a spiritual awakeness. Don't believe me? Go back and read Daniel chapter 12, 1 through 4. All right, let's get back. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. Okay, we will talk about this because this scripture, you see it's in parentheses? It's in parentheses for a reason. It's not talking about this group up here. This is talking about a different group. We're going to talk about this different group down here after verse 10. But for right now, the rest of the dead did not come to life until after the thousand years were ended. That's part of the question that we have for you. Okay? It says, this is this first one up here. And they came to life and ruled as kings with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. Happy and holy is anyone having part in the first resurrection over these. The Wait a minute. There is that term right there, the second death. Now, this is an important term. I want you to pay attention to it because it's important. has no authority. So, this is the first resurrection. Those who came to life and ruled with Christ for a thousand years. That's the first one. Give me a second. I have to show you something before we... Okay, I typed up here. We'll sit on thrones and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, now my computer, because of the overlay, is moving a little bit slow. That's why I typed it in while I had you on pause. So that I could go to this. And now when I do my... Uh-oh, it says search result. I know it's got to have at least one search result. 
Uh, give me a second. No, I don't want that type of search result. Sorry. Give me a second. I must have spelled something wrong. I must have spelled something wrong. So Thrones is right. Judge 12 is right. Okay. Okay, let's get rid of Judge the 12 Tribes of Israel. We're going to put that in. I know it's in Matthews, and I believe it is the 26th chapter, but I cannot. Uh oh. Huh. Publications. So. Okay, we just have to go to Matthew. Give me a second. Whoo, doggy, that took a minute because I'm not used to having a search for it the way I was trying, and so that's why I made a mistake. But we're going to do the 26th chapter. And now we're at 26, and I think it's roughly, should it be 17? Okay. When the evening came, he was reclining at the table with the 12. While they were eating, he said, truly, one of you will betray me. Okay. This is where he talks about, better it be for that man for whom is going to betray him to have never been born at all. And Judas said, hey, is it I, Rabbi? And Jesus said, you know what it is. And now Judas leaves. If you look at the book of Luke, it says he dismissed him. Whatever you are doing, be at it more quickly. Oh, no, the book of John says that. They were thinking that he was talking about the money box, you know, because he was a thief. It's what John goes ahead and explains. Now, notice what Jesus says next. Pay attention because it's the reason why we're coming here. Like I said, there's two questions. This is one of them. And they continued eating. Jesus took a loaf, and after saying a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Hey, take, eat. This means my body. Then taking a cup, after giving thanks, he prayed twice. See, he gave thanks twice, so we're not focusing on that. Okay? But he, after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink out of it, all of you. For this means my body of the covenant makes a covenant with them, a promise, which is to be poured out on your behalf, or on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you that I won't do this no more with y'all until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of my Father. Now, here's the part that we were supposed to be going to. Or maybe I went to the wrong one. I'm sorry. Yep, I went to the wrong one. I went to the wrong one because it's the same section. And this is not where... No, 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 no. I messed up. I'm not supposed to be in Matthew. I believe it is Lucas. But give me a second. One second. I apologize. I, I keep forgetting. Luke gave his story through research and talking eyewitnesses. So sometimes his story doesn't follow exactly the line but Luke is the one that mentions this part here however you are the ones that have stuck with me in my trials and I make a covenant with you just as my father has made a covenant with me for a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel so when I asked remember the first question was whom are these whom he's talking about is it just this group here or are there more well we learned in Matthews it said many on behalf of many not just that group so we got that taken care of that's one thing Whew. all right now that was that now we got to go back to Revelation and finish because we have to get now the first question still hasn't been finished okay because we have to prove that there were many so we're gonna go first back to the 20th and we get here because he says and I saw thrones and those who sat on them and they were given authority to judge so we know we're still talking about that judging that they're given and you're going to learn about that judging in a minute because we said it has some importance we're going to go to chapter 7 of Revelation after this I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding tight the four winds of the earth 
so that no wind would blow upon the earth or upon the sea, mankind, or upon any tree, the towering corporations and all that other stupidity stuff that man has to think that it makes him staturally um, important. And I saw another angel ascending out of the sunrise. That angel ascending out of the sunrise is the angel that comes from the east, and the Bible calls him the morning, bright morning star, having the seal of the living God, again, the bright morning star, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. So if you look at some of the Avengers movies, you'll see that they're preparing to fight a battle against these extraterrestrials. Angels are extraterrestrials, everyone. If you didn't understand that, go back and look what an angel is. They're not of this earth. Extraterrestrial means out and not from the terrestrial, the earth. I'm just so glad you're finally understanding. Saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the slaves of our God in their forehead. Now, of course, he said, and I heard a number of those who were sealed, 144,000 on every tribe of the sons of Israel. So, remember, these ones, these slaves, whom are going to be the judges, that, that's what they do. They judge. We're going to come back to chapter 7 because chapter 20 and chapter 7 of Revelation explain everything about what's going on now. Everybody's so scared. You, yeah, It's irritating. So let me do you a favor. These are not the 12 tribes of Israel. Not the 12 tribes of Jacob. These are the 12 tribes of what's known as spiritual Israel. How do we know? Well, first, I want you to pay attention. We have Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali. We, got, we can't count Manasseh because Manasseh was not a tribe of Israel. Manasseh was the son of Joseph. Simeon. Uh, technically not Levi, but we have to include Levi now because he was a son of Jacob. Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. Wait a minute. Somebody's missing. Somebody is missing. <gasps> oh, Dan. Where is Dan? Anybody seen Dan? Okay, so this lets us know that this is not the original tribes of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not referring to the original tribes of Israel. What is it referring to? This is referring to what Paul speaks of, the Israel of God. The Israel of God, not the Israel of Jacob, but the Israel of God. Because remember, the first Israel, the fleshly Israel, was abandoned. Go back and reread Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and see how Paul explains about fleshly Israel and spiritual Israel. So this is spiritual Israel. By the way, Levi was not a tribe of Israel when counting the 12 tribes. Neither was Joseph. Why? Because Joseph and his two sons, Ephraim, so Ephraim's name would go there, and Manasseh were added to the tribes. And Dan would be here. So those would be the tribes of Israel. Benjamin, Ephraim, Zebulun, Issachar, Manasseh, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Asher, Gad, Reuben, and Judah. Those would be the 12 tribes. So what's missing in this list is, pay attention, Dan of Jacob's original sons. But what's missing of the 12 tribes of Israel as they were listed in the numbering of the tribes in the book of Numbers is Ephraim and Dan because Levi should not be here because Levi did not receive an inheritance. I know for some of you that's complicated, that that's too much detail, that you can't handle that, but that's the whole purpose of this conversation, is I need someone to disprove what was just stated. That's all. Just disprove it. Go back, look at the genealogy, and disprove that when they apportioned the land, that Levi received... An apportionment. Now we know that Levi did receive in the cities and 10 square miles around the city. You, um, not 10 square miles, but the area around the city was a portion for Levi. Okay, for them to grow their crops and everything, but they were never given a territory. They were given allowances, but they were never given a ter territory because they were the possession, the special possession or property of someone. 
but not of the tribes. And so you would have Ephraim and Dan added here, and Joseph was not listed among that because his two sons. That's why Jacob, Reuben slept with his concubine, and because Reuben slept with his concubine, Reuben lost the right of firstborn. Because Jacob suspected that Leah was Rachel and only found out that Leah wasn't Rachel afterward, then if he had had his firstborn with Rachel, it would have been Joseph. This is why Joseph, in the book of Chronicles, the, I think it is the fifth chapter, verse three, or the third chapter, verse five. I'm sorry. I did it again. Give me a second. Apologize. Going from memory is not the greatest thing in the world when it comes to my person. It is First Chronicles, the fifth chapter. These are the sons of Reuben, Israel's firstborn. He was the firstborn, but because he defiled the bed of his father, his right of firstborn was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. So he was not enrolled genealogically for the right of the firstborn. Again, Joseph would have been Jacob's firstborn had Leah and Laban not tricked her, not tricked him. Okay, and so when Reuben committed fornication and adultery with his concubine, Bela, then he lost that right and it went to Joseph. That's why Jacob, when he leaned on his staff, when he was about to die, told Joseph, these two sons of yours, they are mine. They belong to me. And theirs will be yours, but for this point, they are mine. Okay, that's why they received inheritance as the firstborn inheritance. So it went to the tribe of Manasseh and Ephraim. That's why you see them included as the sons of Israel. Sorry, I have to do that because, again, when I make a comment about this or that, I am making that comment, and because I'm making that comment, I have to back up what I say. And that is a promise I've made to myself. Okay, now we get to go back to the 20th chapter because we have to finish my question. So the first question is, the ones who sit on those thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel, we know that those tribes of Israel are not literal tribes of Israel. We know that they are spiritual tribes of Israel. Okay, so because that is the case, we need to find out who those 12s are. Now, we have 12,000 times 12,000 equaling 144,000. Now, it says those who are of these tribes are the ones who are going to be those who are sealed. So we got to find out what they're going to be doing. So let's go to 20. And we're going to go back to that section because we just read it. This is the first resurrection. Happy and holy is anyone having part in the first resurrection? That first group that we talked about, those ones who sit on thrones. Over these, the second death has no authority, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will rule as kings with him for a thousand years. So these individuals are going to be kings and priests, and they will rule for a thousand years. Just that simple. That's why they sit on thrones. Jesus referred to them sitting on thrones. Now, let's see if the scriptures don't make logic. Let's continue. Uh-oh, now we get back to this section up here. Remember I said this section was separate from the rest? Well, let's go ahead and combine the two sections now because it says, as soon as the thousand years have ended. Uh-oh, this section goes too because it says they rule for a thousand years. So as soon as those thousand years will have ended, it says Satan, that dragon, the, the, the serpent, he's going to be released from his prison where he spent the day or a thousand years. And he will go to mislead those nations. Uh-oh, they're going to be nations again. A lot of people, huh? Where are these people going to be? In the four corners of the earth. Not in heaven, but on the earth. Gog and Magog, which is not Satan. Who is Gog and Magog? The nations of the four corners of the earth. It tells you right here. Mislead those nations of the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them these people right here, it tells you who Gog and Magog is without you having to guess. Gather them together for the war. 
the number of these is as the sands of the sea. Gog and Magog, that's a pretty big, big crowd. Go back and look at the book of Ezekiel. I think it is the, it's either the 37th chapter, the 39th chapter that speaks about Gog and Magog. He's not, this group is not mentioned that often. But we do know that it says he goes to mislead those nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them, those nations of the four corners of the earth, together for the war. The number of these is as the sands of the sea. Pay attention. What sea? Not the ocean, but the sea of mankind. So Gog and Magog is mankind when they come together in this instance here. Not before, not after. Don't take my word for it. Prove me wrong. And they advanced over the whole earth and encircled the camp of the holy ones in the beloved city. But fire came down out of heavens and consumed them. Uh-oh, we're going to get back to the beginning times when somebody is acting to correct things. Because remember, pay attention. During that war, fire will come down from the heavens and consume them. So now they're going to be battling against the true God. Now let's do this. And the devil, the dragon, the serpent, who was misleading them, which is what he does was hurled into the lake of fire and sulfur, where both the wild beasts and the false prophets already were. Now remember, the wild, be the wild beasts and the false prophet are mentioned in the chapter 13 of Revelation. Go back and read what they do. It's that false prophet that causes fire to come down from the sky. Fire to come down from the heavens. The false prophet does that. It says, at this point in time, they are already in the lake of fire. Now, if you go to some people, they'll tell you that this lake of fire, this is the second question, this lake of fire is hell. And I, hey, I don't know. I want you to prove to me that the lake of fire is hell because they say when people die, they will go to hell and burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So I want somebody to prove to me that there is a lake of fire where people burn forever and ever and ever and ever. Or is the lake of fire a symbol? Is it, um... <sighs> Revelation does a whole lot of symbolism. So, is it a metaphor? Is it a symbol? Does it signify something? Or is it literal, this lake of fire? So, let's go ahead. Well, Satan is a spirit. So you can't burn the spirit. Sorry, you just can't do it. Go ahead and try. Can't burn the spirit. Okay. Now we got to talk about the third question, ladies and gentlemen. There are three questions. Like I said, Revelation the 20th chapter and Revelation the 7th chapter explains everything about what's going on now. And if you don't understand that this is talking about what's going on in our day, this is the last part. Just got to point out something in Revelation chapter 7, and those are my questions. That's it. And I'm certain that some of you can answer that. Ladies and gentlemen, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and the one seated on it, from before him, the earth and the heavens fled away. Now this throne that you see, you can find this throne in Revelation, the fourth chapter, verse 2 and 3, where it talks about this throne and who sits on it. But you can also find it in Daniel. The, I believe it is the seventh chapter, verse 10. It talks about that same throne. And the one who is seated on that throne. Sorry, I have to plug in the battery of the computer because I've been running it without a battery. And if I don't plug in when the auxiliary battery runs dead, then the computer will shut off and I'll lose everything. And so, sorry about that. Now, let's do this. It says, before him, the earth and the heavens fled away. At this point in time, it's talking about the old earth. And it's talking about the old heaven. How do we know? For I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven was the one where Satan used to live there, but he got kicked out. The old earth was the one where all these people were doing all this stupid stuff on the earth, and they've been destroyed. So that's why it's a new heavens and a new earth here. But this old heaven and new earth, uh, old earth, gone. And no place was found for them because they're gone forever. And I saw the dead. Uh-oh, dead. Now, is this the spiritually dead, or is this the physically dead? Well, let's find out. The great and the small, standing before the throne. Oh, so that must mean they're in heaven. Wait, are we sure? Wait, hold on. Watch this. 
the E A R T H is G O D F O O T S T O O L. The earth is God's footstool. Let's see if anything comes up. Whoa, look at that. I don't want that. I don't want publication. Let's see. I'm going to put the apostrophe here and see if that changes. Oh, because that's not exactly what it says. Okay, I, I understand. I'm sorry. I put the apostrophe. This is Matthew's, the fifth chapter, and I know that's where it's going to take us. He says, again, you heard it was said, in ancient times you must not swear without performing, but I say to you not swear uh, when you pay, you must pay your vow to Job. Okay, so you must not swear without performing, but you must pay your vow to Job. I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet. It is the footstool, the earth is the footstool of God's feet. You know what a footstool is? Well, that's what you put in front of a chair, and people put their feet on it because, you know, the chair is a little high. Well, let's go back and see if this is where we be. Okay, we're going to go back. And I want you all to pay attention. And I saw the dead and the great and the small standing before God's throne or at his footstool. And scrolls were open. Scrolls are books. And another scroll was open. It's called the scroll or book of life. And you'll see that's what our footnotes will talk about is the book of life. Psalm 69, 28. Let them be erased from the book of life. Okay. So now... The book of life is open up, and the people are standing before his throne. Guess what? They are about to have a judgment done. It's called Judgment Day. Why? Because the day that they have just come through was a thousand years. A thousand years is one day, and a day is as a thousand years. So that's Judgment Day, according to the scriptures. And the dead were judged out of the things written in the books according to their deeds during Judgment Day. Because why is it during the thousand years? Well, that's easy. Um, acquitted of their sins. Uh-oh. Sorry, maybe... No, we're going to do acquitted. Forget that. It'll be a whole lot easier for me to get to Romans. Oh, I'm spelling acquitted wrong. Oh, snap. Let's do that. Nope, I still spelled it wrong. Oh, okay. I I, I don't spell acquitted that long. Uh-oh, that's the wrong Q. Nope, I ain't spelling it right, y'all. Tell me how to spell it. No, that's not it either. All right, I'll just go there because it, it, it makes no sense. I'll, I'll get the spelling in a second. It's uh, Romans 6, 7 is where we're going. Okay, so R-O-M 6 colon 7. Enter. For one who has died, A-C-Q. I thought it was C, but I wasn't sure. So it's acquitted as opposed to an acquitted. See, I've been doing acquitted. That's why I spelled it the way I did. But it's acquitted of their sins. It's all about phonics. Ladies and gentlemen, for the one who has died has been acquitted of his sins. So when Jesus said this, M-A-T-T, -T, 5, colon, 28, which is 28, but I say to you that everyone, no, not 528, John, I'm sorry, I did Matthews. I apologize. Like I said, it's a memory thing. And trying to move too fast. John 528, do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming when all those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice. Now, let's look at what happens when they hear his voice. 
and come out. Those who did good things to a resurrection of life, those who practice vile things to a resurrection of judgment. This is at the end of the thousand years. They have been resurrected and they stand before God's throne. How do we know? I'll show you in a second. It says in the dead, these individuals who had not come to life, they've been resurrected. They had been living during a thousand years, but they had not officially come to life because the thousand years were over. So until the thousand years had ended, the dead were judged out of the things written in the scrolls according to their deeds. And the sea gave up those dead in it. Uh-oh, now this sea, look at that, is the actual sea. So it's not the figurative sea anymore because we talked about the figurative sea earlier. But this is talking about where people are dead. Gave up those dead in it and death, uh-oh, and the grave or Hades, Hades, that is the common grave of mankind. So death and the grave gave up the dead in them, and they were judged according to their deeds. Okay, so now, here we go. Finally, we get to go back to REV7, and we're going to do 9. No, we're going to go Revelation 7. Forget that. Okay. Whew. All right, now. On this side, I should have it pull up on the big screen, but we're going to go to verse number 9. And it says, in verse number 9, this is important, And I saw and look, a great crowd, which no man was able to number, out of all the nations, tribes, and peoples, and tongues, out of the sea, standing before the throne, the footstool of God's throne, and before the Lamb, dressed in white robes, and there were palm branches in their hand. Now you hear me say footstool of God's throne. Where am I getting that from? It doesn't say that here. Hold on. Hold on. Now they study before the throne. They're dressed in white robes and they're palm branches. So these are righteous people. These are not just anybody. They're dressed in white robes. White is a symbol of righteousness. And there were palm branches. Palm branches symbolize peace in their hands. And they kept shouting with a loud voice, Salvation we owe to our God. So they owe their lives to him who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb who is the Christ. Now, let's um, find out who these people are because it's very important because it says nobody was able to number them. So they're an unnumbered people. Let's find out. In response, one of the elders said to me, These who are dressed in white robes, who are they and where do they come from? <laughs> right away I said to him, My Lord, you're the one that knows. You're the one showing me this, so you should already know. And he said to me, these are the ones that come out of the Great Tribulation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you go and do your research, Matthews, the 24th chapter, verse 21 and 22, shows the Great Tribulation happening on the earth. Mark, the 13th chapter, verse 19, shows the Great Tribulation happening on the earth. Not on the heavens, but on the earth. That being the case... My external battery just went dead. So I am now using a second external battery temporarily until I finish this video, which will be shortly. That I promise. The tribulation happens on the earth. The tribulation doesn't happen in heaven. So these are the ones that come out of the great tribulation. So these are not the ones who are spirits and go to heaven. These are the ones who come out of the tribulation. They are on the earth. They're not in heaven. The tribulation doesn't happen in heaven, so they can't come out of the tribulation to heaven. That's a long trip, ain't it? And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, showing that they are servants of Christ Jesus. And that is why they are before the throne, and that is why they render sacred service to him day and night. In his temple and the one seated on the throne will spread his tent over them, which means they're beneath him. Because he spreads his tent over them, not brings them into his tent. He spreads it over them. And they will hunger no more, nor thirst any more, nor will the sun beat down on them any more, nor any scorching heat, because the Lamb who is in their midst, will, who is in the midst of the throne, will shepherd them and will guide them to the springs of waters of life. 
and God will wipe out every tear from their eye. Now, when we talk about God wiping out every tear from their eye, we have to go here to Revelation 21, verse 4. And he will wipe out every tear from their eye, and death will be no more, neither will mourning nor outcry nor pain be any more, the former things have passed away. This is the earth. It says, with that I heard a loud voice from the throne say, look, the tent of God is with mankind. Mankind does not exist on the heavens. Mankind exists on the earth. And he'll reside with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. So, so far... Everything is lining up like it should. Okay. Now, let's go back to that. That was the second question. Who are these people? Where are they? And if they're being judged during this period of time, why is it that so many people are teaching that Grandma went to heaven and little Johnny went to heaven, but Hitler went to hell. Why, why are they teaching that stuff? The scriptures don't say that. It tells us that hell is nothing more than the grave. It's nothing more than death. But now we need to find out what the second death is because we've been finding out about the lake of fire. It says in death, pay attention, death and Hades or the grave, were hurled into the lake of fire. So this lake of fire is something else, ain't it? I mean, this is a powerful thing where you can throw death and hell, which everybody keeps talking about, go to hell, you're going to burn in hell. Well, hell is not the place where things burn because hell and death are thrown into the lake of fire, which is what people were preaching is in eternal damnation, eternal torment. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's find out what it really is, if you don't mind. And I just need somebody to prove me wrong. This means the second death, the lake of fire. Well, isn't that interesting? This is the third time we didn't have to guess that it actually tells us what it means. Hold on. So the lake of fire, this, this fiery place that is supposed to be fiery, just means the second death? Well, what's the first death? Well, the first death is where somebody is not living anymore. Well, the second death, well, the first death, you know the unique thing about the first death? You get a resurrection. Yeah, well, that's what we just learned about. They get a resurrection. And they're judged during that period of time. We just learned about that. Matthews, I mean, excuse me, that's where I made the mistake the first time by going to Matthews 5. But John 5, 28 and 29. Resurrection of life and resurrection of judgment. But they get a resurrection. But from the second death, there is no resurrection. Happy and holy of anyone. Let's do it so that you guys can see it. What does it say? Happy and holy is anyone having part in the first resurrection over these. The second death has no authority. Because from the second death, you can't get a resurrection. That's at least what it seems the scriptures are saying. I just need somebody to prove me wrong. Or prove, excuse me, I apologize, because I'm just reading from the scriptures. Prove the scriptures wrong. Furthermore, whoever is not found, was not found, written in a book of life, was hurled into the lake of fire, or received the second death, because they don't deserve life. So, the opposite of life is death. They receive death, and there is no hope as a resurrection, of, a resur of a resurrection. Now, to prove that the second death simply is the lake of fire, Watch this, but as for the cowards, Revelation 21, verse 8, and those without faith, and those who are disgusting in their filth, and murderers, and sexual immoral, and the sexually immoral, and those practicing spiritism and idolatry, or idolaters, and all the liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. So that lake is called the lake of fire. This means the second death. So it tells us what it means. So somebody tell me, where in it can anyone interpret anything? When it tells you what it means. So now, as a recap, because I promise I will do this in every video, when I remember, my first question was, we find out that Satan is locked up. He's put in prison. Because that's his lot. Okay? He is put in prison. And many people say he deserves that. 
not my not my place okay sorry I need to go here so he's put in prison for a thousand years so that he cannot mislead the nations anymore but he's only put in prison a short while then we find that there are thrones being set up in heaven not on earth and that these individuals who sit on these thrones are being made kings and priests of God and of his father and they rule with them for a thousand years over mankind even Paul says do you know that we're going to rule over angels so they will get the opportunity and privilege to rule for a thousand years well what's gonna happen after that when those new scrolls are given that will give us what happens after that but for right now nothing to be worried about not not the point then the recap is after those thousand years of in it Satan's gonna be let loose out of his prison he's gonna get out on appeal but he's gonna lose the appeal how, how do we know because hold on ladies and gentlemen he receives the death sentence that's how we know and when he gets out he goes back and he does the exact same things which document his wrongdoing that there is going to be a time when he gathers all of those people that he misleads and those people are going to be categorically called Gog and Magog and he's going to use them to fight like he did the first time in Revelation you don't believe me that he didn't do it the first time watch this I don't know why people do this ladies and gentlemen and I saw the wild beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the one who's seated on the horse and against his army if you go back and you look at the Avengers the creatures that they're fighting with Loki is from the heavens they're preparing for that battle if you don't believe me then why do they have nuclear weapons on the space station oh that's to deflect any uh, meteors or anything that comes too close to the earth really interesting that makes a lot of sense yeah when was the last time a meteor struck the earth well scientists say about eight billion years ago exactly they're spending a lot of money going back and forth to that space station preparing for something but anyway as we were saying these individuals these kings these people of the earth are being gathered to fight a war that they cannot win but the unique thing is they're still gonna fight now hold on at this point the wild beast and the false prophet the one that's like a lion they're thrown into the lake of fire while still alive they were both hurled into the lake of fire the lake that burns with sulfur okay and the rest were killed with the long sword of the one who sits on that white horse who is said to be the Lamb of God who is said to be Jesus so now that we got this recap now that we understand who Gog and Magog is and Satan's destruction now we talk about judgment why because the thousand years have ended at this point and now that the and by the way the section I just read was before the thousand years during the thousand years everything starts anew everything starts anew for the people who are resurrected and the people who make it they're judged according to what they do during this thousand years that's why scrolls were open and each one was judged according to their deeds not the deeds they did what before they died because who he who has died has been acquitted of his sins death is the ultimate price so your sins are forgiven upon death okay the only people who don't get resurrected are the ones who blasphemed who sinned against the Holy Spirit they don't get resurrected they're not promised resurrection never were it says in the sea gave up those dead and then death and Hades gave up those dead and them and then it says they were judged individually according to their deeds pay attention ladies and gentlemen 
the dead were judged out of the things written in the scrolls according to their deeds. The sea and death and Hades, those individuals were judged according to their deeds during the thousand years. Because that's when this judgment takes place during the thousand years. That's why it says, And I saw a great white throne and a one seated. Remember that there are individuals who are judging with him. That's why it says they were judged. They were judged. So during the thousand years, they are being judged according to their deeds during that period. And then after the thousand years, the final enemy death and Hades are hurled into the second death, which is just a symbol of finality. This means the second death, the symbol of finality, the lake of fire. Now when it talks about being tormented, yeah, Satan's never died before, so that will be torment for him. That's why Look at the fact that when Jesus was expelling the demons out of the man who used to hang at the tombs and was naked most of the time, that legion, because there are many of us, begged him not to send them into Tartarus or the abyss. Do not torment us at this time is what their request was. That's torment for them, ladies and gentlemen. That thousand year period of being locked away, these are spirit creatures who never been confined, never been subjected to slavery. Now they're going to be locked away? Heavens to Murgatory. So, I just need someone with what we just explained, what, what's going on during this period of time in which we live, preparing for this thousand year period that is set to come. It's not me that says it. I just need somebody to prove me wrong. Prove me wrong that after the tribulation, all of this does not happen. That this is not the promise. And that Revelation, the seventh chapter, speaks about those who come out of the great tribulation, that that doesn't apply to every single person having that possibility who's alive now. But says they have to be able to have the ability of being looked at with white palm branches and white robes. I mean white palm branches. Palm branches in their hand and white robes. That they have washed in the blood of the Lamb. Symbolism. Not literal. Alright. I just wanted to share that with people. And I, like I said, I just want somebody to prove the information incorrect. That's all. I'm going to leave comments open on this video. All right, I got to go, you all, because I have to finish a bunch of documents, but I'm hoping this information will prove beneficial to somebody. Got to go, got to go, got to go.